In this video, we'll create a transparent HTML login form using Bootstrap. So let's take a look at it here before we get started. So as you can see at the top of the transparent login form, we have this circular uh, user image that we're going to add. And I'm going to show you how you can add your own image in the tutorial. Then we have the uh, username input here, followed by the password input underneath it with these icons to the left showing a user and then the lock here for the password input field, followed by our login button here, and then the forgot password button. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just size this down a little bit and then I'll show you what we need to get started with the tutorial. So in the description of this video will be these free downloadable files for index.html and style.css. I'm gonna be using the free program called Sublime Text as my text editor while we develop the login form. And I'm gonna have it open with Google Chrome as my web browser while we're building it. Also included in the files will be the mountain background image as well as the user image here that you see above the form. So let's go over to um, index.html and let's see what's included for us here. So from the top, we have our doc type HTML. Then our, in our head section, we have our title. So I'm just going to write transparent login form. And then underneath our title, we have the latest version of Bootstrap, CSS, Bootstrap 4, the latest version of jQuery, then the latest version of popper.js, which is recommended for Bootstrap followed by the latest version of bootstrap.js. And then we have a font awesome here uh, linked, which will help us develop these icons that we're seeing with the user and the lock. And then obviously we have a link to style.css, which we'll get to in the later part of the tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started with the login form. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bootstrap class called modal dialog that's going to wrap our form here so i'll just create some space under here so we're not looking at the bottom of the screen and we'll start off with the div class as i said and we'll call it modal dash dialog and then our text is going to be centered here so we'll just write text dash center and bootstrap will take care of the text centering throughout our form then we can drop down and close out the div. And inside of that, we'll have another div class. And that's going to be for our column that the form sits inside of. So we'll say call sm8 and then main dash section. So call sm8 means that our bootstrap column here will take up eight of the 12 columns, so two thirds of the screen, and it's gonna turn into a single column once we get down to 576 pixels for the smaller screens with SM. So let's go ahead and create our next div class, which is div class modal dash content. And then we can go ahead and close out our div. And then you can create some space inside of this div because this is where we'll be laying out all of our form content. So let's start with our uh, user image. So we'll wanna take up 100% um, of the form. So we're gonna use div class call 12 to take up all 12 columns inside of the form. And then we'll just write user dash image as a, our class. And then inside of this div, we'll reference the image for the uh, person.png file here. So it'll be image source and then img forward slash for the image folder person.png. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our image here. And the next thing that we'll add will be our first import section. Um, but we'll need to wrap it with a form input class here. So we'll say call 12 form dash input. Okay, and then inside of that, we'll have our actual form. So we'll just use the HTML5 form tag. And then we'll say form class form dash group for our first input. 
and then inside of it we'll use the input tag so input type text rather than email and then class form dash control and then we'll just write our placeholder text in there so you can write whatever you want but I'm just gonna keep it the same as the original with enter username and now if we go ahead and refresh we should have our first input section here so there we have it okay so let's go ahead and add the enter password input so we can just copy this whole uh, form group div class and just change text to password and then username to password here and there we have our second form group and form input for our password and let's go ahead and add our button next so underneath the form group div we'll add a button tag and we'll say button type submit and then we'll give it a class and we'll use the standard uh, success green um, bootstrap button and then we'll just write login here to match the original okay so there we have our button and then lastly for the HTML let's add our forgot password section so we'll drop underneath the uh, form input class here and we'll write div class call 12 and we'll just call it link dash part and then we'll add our link so href and I'll just leave it blank with a hashtag and then write forgot password question mark okay so there we have our forgot password text and that's everything for our HTML so now we're ready to move over to style.css and get started with the uh, styling so the first thing that we'll style will be the body section so we can change the font to the Google font that we have referenced at the top so we'll say font family Roboto from Google fonts and that's a sans serif font and that's going to change the font family a bit there and then next let's add our background image of the mountain.jpg file so background URL img forward slash mountain.jpg and then we don't want it to repeat so we'll say no repeat center center fixed okay so now if we refresh we have the background image but it's not taking up the whole page so let's also add a style that says background size cover and that's going to take care of the um, the spacing that we're seeing around it okay so now we have the background image matching so let's move on to our uh, main section class here so we can move the form around so we'll say main section and then margin zero auto to center it okay and then let's push it away from the top like the original so we'll say margin top 150 pixels and then to make it a little wider we'll get rid of the padding off to the sides of our main section class so we'll just write padding zero okay so now we have it matching the size and position of the original so let's move on to give it some color so we'll style the modal dash content class next so we'll use a period for the class rather than a hashtag for an ID and then we'll write background color 33495E as our hex value which is sort of a flat dark blue and then we'll give it some opacity to make it transparent so opacity 0.85 and you can mess with that to uh, get it to the transparency that you want it at okay so next let's move on to our image here 
So that's going to be the user image class. And we'll want to pull it up some so it's hanging outside of the form. So we'll say margin top negative 50 pixels. And then let's give it some margin on the bottom. So margin bottom 30 pixels to separate it from our uh, input sections. So that looks pretty good except for the size. So let's move on to style the actual image. So we'll use the Im user image class and then just IMG for the image source. And we'll give it a height and width of 100 pixels. So with the margin top negative 50, it will be half of our user image there. So that looks pretty good. So let's move on to our uh, form group sections next for our inputs. So that's going to be the uh, form group class here inside of the actual form tag. So we'll write dot form dash group and then margin bottom 20 pixels to separate them a bit. Okay. All right, so that looks good. And then let's move on to our actual input section. So we'll just add input to our form group class. And let's do away with our border radius. So we'll say border radius 0. And then there's still a little bit of a border added by default. So let's get rid of that too. So border 0. Okay, so that looks good. And then we'll want to change the height of it. So we'll say height 38 pixels. I think the original height is about 35 if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe th the low 30s. And let's add some padding to the left of our text here. Okay, so that looks good. So now we can move on to our font awesome icons. So let's go ahead and reference the form group again and we'll say form dash group colon colon before and then we'll use the font awesome font family. So this is font awesome version 5 and it's the free version. So we'll say font family font awesome backslash five free and then for our content we'll add a special unicode here for the user icon so we'll say backslash f007 okay so now if we refresh there we have the user unicode icon and if you want to change it you can do a Google search for font awesome icons to find the U the Unicode and let's move it off to the left here so we'll say left 25 pixels okay and then we'll just change the size so let's change the font size of our icon to 25 pixels Okay, so that looks good. And then we'll match the um, mountain color behind the form with the color of our icon. So we'll use the hex value 366577. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now to change this one to the lock, we'll want to reference the last of our form group classes and then use the before style also. So we'll say form group last of type and then colon colon before and then content and the Unicode for this is backslash F023 to get the lock icon. Okay, so that looks good. So the next thing that we'll move on to will be our login button here. So we'll want to reference the, um, the button 
tag here, and that's inside of our form input class. So we'll reference the form input first, and then our button. So dot form dash input button, and we'll give it a width of 30% And then let's add some margin to the bottom of it to separate it from the forgot password text. So margin bottom 30 pixels. OK. And then let's go on to style the actual button. So we'll use the button success class here. So dot button dash success. And then we'll change the background color to hex value 2ECC71. Which is sort of that flat lime greenish color. And let's add some, or take away the border radius rather. And then we'll add some padding. Okay, so we'll say padding. 0.7 rem all around. So one rem is 16 pixels, so you can do the math. And then we'll want to add our hover color to our button here. So we'll say dot btn success colon hover. And let's just change the background color to the hex value 27AE60, which is just the same shade of green basically just a little bit darker okay so lastly let's move down to our forgot password link here so we we'll want to reference that with our class here called link part so we'll say dot link dash part and let's add some padding to it to separate it from the uh, top with 5 pixels and then 0 left right and then for the bottom we'll add 20 pixels rather than 2 and then there's still some uh, additional space underneath the login button So let's change margin bottom for our button to 20 pixels from 30 pixels. Okay, so that looks good. And then lastly, let's go ahead and change the color of our link part link. So link part A, and we'll just give it the color BFE4EC, which matches the blue sky in the mountain picture. Okay, so that looks good, and that does it for the complete tutorial. I want to thank you for sticking around with me. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.